Oh hey guys, today I'm just doing a little experiment. I've taken an LM386 IC and hooked it up with dual supplies. So it's getting a plus 4.5 volts and a negative 4.5 volts supply. And feeding it from the power supply here, it's set up in serial mode. So that gives me relative to common a positive and negative supply voltage. So why would I do this? Well, it does one thing. It eliminates the output capacitor and capacitive reactants will roll off the base unless you use a very large value. But eliminating that capacitor should give us a flat response. And some people ask me, why don't I do frequency response tests on amplifiers? Well, any integrated circuit chip or modern design discrete amplifier, frequency response is a complete non-issue. Even this LM386 from the 1970s has no issue with frequency response, and I'll show you that momentarily. However, if the circuit has an output coupling capacitor, it's going to roll off at lower frequencies. And that's just physics. That's uh, capacitive reactants doing that. So here is the circuit. Very simple. We have the uh, negative supply side and the positive supply side. I'll adjust the camera so you can see the full schematic. So we have some capacitors, you know, this is electrolytic bypass for the power supply on the negative side, and there's a film or ceramic bypass, same on the positive side. Besides these power supply components, there's really not much to it. There's a input coupling and um, just your output. Of course, there's no uh, coupling capacitor there or you could also call it a DC blocking capacitor. Since the output is normally biased at one half the supply voltage, well now we're putting ground at one half the supply voltage because we have a negative four and a half and a positive four and a half volts so ground is at zero potential of course so the output will be around zero potential. Now the a lot of these ICs that were meant for single supply, their bias is not quite at half supply voltage. So what's going to happen, there will be a little bit of offset. Matter of fact, this measures at about 226 millivolts in this case. So it's not a serious issue, but you know, there is going to be some current flowing that would be a draw on your batteries. Now there's one interesting thing here. Notice that the uh, return for the input side goes to the negative supply voltage. And that's just the way the LM386 was set up with a ground referenced input. So what has to happen here, you know, normally pin 4 is the ground, and, but now it's the negative supply. But we still have to connect the input return and this um, inverting input also connects there because of that design but you know that's not a big deal this circuit will still work just fine and these PG ground points are the star ground for the power you know type you know the supply and the output ground um, you don't want signals flowing in that and of course it doesn't because we're returning to the um, pin 4 which is the negative supply voltage in this case and uh, we're well decoupled with our uh, power supply so it's, it's not going to be an issue with uh, you know the signal and power grounds okay I will play a 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz sweep and you can watch the response okay I got it set up here so Watch how it stays pretty flat. 
It didn't climb or anything. Now you will notice a very slight change and I found that the music player does vary by you know fraction of a decibel across the spectrum. That's not the amplifier. See it's below the line the graticule and then it goes you know right up on the graticule and spread that out a little bit. So we're at 10 kilohertz and the amplifier is just uh, stone flat it's just no issues with frequency response at all. I am scoping across a 8 ohm load. I have an 8 ohm load on it. Now near 20 kilohertz the music player will start to ramp off the signal. Again that is not the amplifier. See it's starting to ramp off and then it restarts at 20 hertz. Okay I'll stop this and I'll connect up my uh, crappy function generator. Okay, I have my function generator connected. And we were running near clipping too in that previous test because it's clipping right there. So let me back that off a bit. Now you will notice a notch and that's caused by the function generator. It, for some reason on the negative peak it has a little notch and it gets worse as the battery runs down in the function generator. But we're running at around 2 kilohertz and I'll increase this. Increasing, increasing. Okay, we're at 30 kilohertz and you know it's just not changing it's flat and we'll go up to that's 142 kilohertz now the function generator itself does ramp off a little bit and the function generators output you know I'm near max and it does get distorted the amplifier might be doing that as well. That's uh, 233 kilohertz. And, you know, it's barely, barely down. But again, I, the function generator ramps off itself. And, of course, the notch right there. That, I'm not sure what's causing that notch, but there's that notch caused by the function generator. But you can see way beyond the audio spectrum that the frequency response is pretty flat. You know, it doesn't change at all, really. It's just flat. Excellent. Okay, let's check distortion. Okay, we're about at clipping there. It's a little over two volts. Turn that clipping out. That's running about half a watt. The uh, yeah nine volt supply at eight ohms is about half a watt with the LM386. It's not a powerhouse amp by any means, but yeah, it's not too bad. Now let me turn this off here. As usual in my videos, this is a built-in 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal at 1% of the 1 kilohertz fundamental. And there is a little notch here at about half a percent distortion. I'm going to guess that a lot of that is uh, setting up here on the breadboard or on the socket board. You can't really get very good ground, so you're going to have some distortion. In a proper setup, I can probably knock that pretty much down out of the picture, maybe down to 0.2%. So it is uh, nearly a hi-fi performance from a little tiny chip amp, a cheap little LM386. In my slipping sort of step, I'll try to do 
much better yet with what I get. Sounds pretty good to me. And that was a cut from Gandalf. That was a kind of obscure 60s band. They kind of got screwed by the record company. What happened, they, uh, they're they kind of an East Coast band and they got a record contract. And they you know, went into the studio in 1967 and recorded that album. Well, the record label, I forget who it is, Capitol Records, I think, I'm not sure exactly, but, uh, well, they didn't release it. They sat on it and sat on it until 1969, and they finally released it. And when they released it, there was a mix-up at the record plant. They put another record in the sleeve of their album. You know, after that delay, the band pretty much broke up because they weren't getting anywhere and then after that big debacle it pretty much killed their reputation but they finally uh, got some respect later on when people discovered their music and buying CDs and such much later but you know it was far too late of course so that was my little artist vignette for this video um, now I will hook this up in a more conventional manner with an output capacitor and I'll show you how the uh, low frequency response will roll off. Okay I have a 470 microfarad output capacitor. We're at 20 Hertz and it's only outputting 746 millivolts. So let me step up here That's 22 hertz. It's increasing. 25 hertz. 30 hertz. Um, still about half the volt output voltage it should be. And as I step up here. Uh, we're at 38 hertz. Let me skip ahead here. At 70 hertz, and it's still uh, quite a bit rolled off. Now let me go to the sweep. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Normally it should be around 2 volts output. So you can see how the output coupling capacitor rolls off your signal. So let me stop that. And back up to my uh, frequencies individual frequencies we'll run it at 30 hertz here so we're outputting about a volt so let's increase the uh, capacitance so I'll take that one out I'll put a thousand microfarad in is that in the right one You can see that's a lot better using a higher capacitance, but it's still not, you know, up to where it should be. But at 8 ohms, a thousand's pretty good because you'll get decent response down to around 40 hertz or so. Let's go up to 40 hertz. Oops, went by it. See, we're off a little bit, but to the ear, that would be practically inaudible. So there you have it, the LM386 running on dual supplies and a comparison 
using single supply and having the output coupling capacitor. Thanks for watching.